In this section, you're also tasked with finding the x-intercepts of a quadratic function as well. And here I have three different types of quadratic functions, and you'll actually use uh, some different methods of trying to find these x-intercepts. Uh, now recall, even back in the very first section, we talked about finding x-intercepts. And you remember what you did to find an x-intercept? To find an x-intercept, you plugged a 0 in for y, right? So you plug a zero in for y. So let's see if we can still apply that into this scenario. So here is this function, the first one we're dealing with here. And I, we, we discussed function notation. This x of, uh, q of x is the same thing as a y. So this is the same thing. Okay. And remember, to find an x-intercept, you plug a zero in for y. So that zero becomes, that right there becomes a zero. Or you could have just put a zero right there set the whole thing equal to zero. Some people say it like that. But I'm going to rewrite it like this. x minus 2 squared plus 3 equals zero. For every one of these, to find the x-intercept, you set the whole function equal to zero. Or you replace this guy with a zero. However you want to think about it. Now, there is a difference between solving one of these and solving standard form. Okay, If it's in vertex form, it's so much easier. It's so much easier. So what you do is you can just plainly solve for x here, okay, this, if it's in vertex form. So what you're going to do, you move the 3 over, so I'll subtract 3 from both sides. So when I do that, I get x minus 2 squared equals negative 3, because that cancels to 0. Well, now you've got all this being uh, squared, so to undo a power of 2, you take a square root. So I take the square root of both sides. That kills off the power of 2, and you're left with the square root of negative 3. Now, the square root of negative 3 is a non-real number. Okay, it's i. Ah, it's imaginary. So really, there is no number here. There, there's no number. You can't solve for x. It's imaginary. Your answer would be... That's weird. We'll talk about that later in other sections. But what that means is... If you wind up with the square root of a negative, there's no x-intercepts. Now, if you look at a graph of it, we got it pulled up here. This is the graph of um, x minus 2 squared plus 3, exactly what we got. Well, it doesn't go below the x-axis. It doesn't go below the x-axis. So the graph is opening upward, it just doesn't have an x-intercept, it's just, it doesn't touch it. So you can have an answer to some of these questions of none. There's no x-intercepts, we've seen that before, absent. Okay, let's try the next one here. Let's try one that does. Okay, let's try one that does. Now we can graph this to begin with to see, that might be a better idea to do, is graph this and see what it is, so. I've already got it plugged in here. So if I draw this one, I definitely have Sorry, you can't see that. I definitely have two x-intercepts there. Two of them. And if I zoom in, it looks like it's 1 and 3. That's what it looks like. So, but to get that, remember all you're doing here is basically setting this whole thing equal to 0. You're replacing this with a 0. That's what you do to find an x-intercept. You replace the y with a 0. So I'm just going to place this all with a 0 here. Set it equal to 0. All right, solve, just like I did last time. I moved my three over last time, so I'll move my one over this time. All right, take a square root to get rid of the power of two. Take a square root over here. Oh, I don't want to have to write those parentheses. No need writing those. But what's the square root of one? It's actually plus and minus one. All right, the square root of 1 is a positive 1 and a negative 1 because 1 squared is 1 and negative 1 squared is 1. That's what the square root says, right? What number times itself twice gives me the number under the radical. So remember, if you take a square root here, you're always going to get a plus or minus. That's how we're going to get two answers. Remember how there's two x-intercepts? That's how we're going to get two answers if it's plus minus. Well, now we just need to add 2. So now this becomes two problems. x equals a negative 1 plus 2. x equals a positive 1 plus 2. There's 
two ideas here. This is two numbers right here. So negative one plus two is one. And x, uh, see, one plus two is three. And just like we saw a second ago from my graph, that's what I'm gonna get. One comma zero, three comma zero. Those are my x-intercepts. So if you got this thing in vertex form, it's not too shabby, right? Just remember to take a square root. Remember that this plus or minus. Where it gets a little hairy is this last one. It's this last one here where it's in standard form. You can actually complete the square and make it look like this. But by the time you did all that work to complete the square look like that, and then complete this, you know, do the same work here, you could have just done a less work, essentially, with this form. So I'm going to leave it in this form. I'm not going to complete the square. I think Hawks likes you to complete the square here. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to... I've got two options when I have standard form. We've got two options. Those two options would be either two. Factor. Remember factoring? Looks like this. Remember you got x plus a number, x minus a number. These multiply to give you the last number, and then they add to give you the middle number. I don't know if you recall factoring. Or you get the quadratic formula. And most people say, ah, quadratic formula, no. So they go to factoring. Or they say, ah, factoring, no. And they do the, the quadratic formula. Either way works. Either way gives you an answer. I like the factoring because I know my multiplication tables. So <laughs> if you know your multiplication tables, you're all right. We're going to set the, the equation equal to 0. Okay, I'm running out of room here, and we'll set the equation equal to 0 now. The function equal to 0 is what I should say. Put me some x's in here, because x times x is x squared. What two numbers multiply to give you 5 and add to give you 6? Well, they both have to be multiplied by a positive positive to give me a positive answer over here. So 1 and 5 would work. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 plus 5 is 6. So if you multiply this back out, you'll get this if you fold this back out, right? First, outer, inner, last. This is this. So now, what you do is you say, well, how could, what values would I need to plug in here for x to give me zero? Well, I can see that if I plugged in a negative one here, negative one plus one is zero, and zero times anything is zero. If I plug in a negative five, well, I'm gonna get negative five plus five is zero, and zero times anything is zero. I can look at it, but I've been doing this for a while. If you can't see it, you just set this guy equal to zero, and you set this guy equal to zero, and it tells you. So my x-intercepts would be negative one comma zero, negative five comma zero. And I've got this one graphed in here as well. There they are, negative one. And if I count it over, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, negative five. And actually mine will, pretty sure mine can find them. They're called uh, roots, negative five, zero, and negative one, zero. That's mine, Cassie will calculate does it real quick for me. Gotta show your work on the test though. We need to make sure you can do this by hand. So if you want any type of partial credit, or any credit at all for that matter, you gotta show this work. You gotta show this work. So, recap. If you see this in vertex form, you set it equal to zero and just solve it out. You subtract over this number, take the square root, and then get rid of that number. All right, you wanna set this equal to zero. You add off the one, take a square root, add, uh, add two to, to both sides. Here, you've got a factor or use the quadratic formula. I promise you in this section, every one of these will factor. So I want you to factor all these. In the next sections, we'll have to use the quadratic formula and use that. That's how you find the x-intercepts of a quadratic.